source um, when they're kind of obsessing on something or having trouble letting go of something. <coughs> so I recommend it. But I also want to say, if self-help strategies aren't doing it for you, um, I would love to walk out of here thinking that somebody in this room felt more comfortable reaching out for resources for therapy that would help them. I, I think we're still in this mindset, especially helpers, especially caregivers who wait longer than, I mean, I, I've worked with 185 employers and I've been doing employee assistance work for almost 30 years. And caregivers, helpers, wait longer than other people to let people help us. Gee, why? You know, why do you think that is? I'm sure you've got some ideas. But if somebody in this room, you know, would let someone else be a guide and a consultant to you to learn what works in cutting that tape and changing it so that you are being kind to yourself and, um, and saving yourself a lot of grief and stress, I would be very happy. So that's my plug for that. Okay, um, number five, the must-do list. Let's think about decades and not years. And I, I actually <laughs> wanted to add something to the must-do list. Let's do the want-to-do list as well with this. Um, you know, how many things have you heard about you can have it all or you can have it all? But people forget an essential element, which is the timeline. You know, a lot of people I know are stressing over the fact that they can't do everything this year. What about decades? You know, I went off of every board I was on. I stopped my volunteer work when I had kids. I picked up PTA, bless you. I picked up PTA, but I decided for the 15 years of my life, which hopefully would be a 90 to 100 year life, you know, 15 years, I could, like, not do volunteer work for the most part, and the world would survive, and it did. Um, you know, I, I think we forget about the sequential nature of fitting everything in. We're allowed to choose. You're allowed to space things out. And it doesn't mean you're, um, you know, falling down on the job or not doing your civic duty or whatever. We can also think seasonally. Seasonally. We all have housekeeping. We have to get to the grocery store. We have to you know, do stuff around the house. There's just stuff that has to get done. I've learned to not do that when the weather's really nice. <laughs> I don't do any chores that it can possibly be put off when we have a beautiful day. We live in Rhode Island. There will be ugly days. And so we can put the chore list aside and play when the weather's nice. That's really working for me. <laughs> And another thing is to believe the evidence that meditative practices, you know, the research on meditation, mindfulness, um, yoga, exercise, it's, it's true. <laughs> You're not making it up. Um, and getting six to eight hours of sleep, um, which for a lot of people is like, dude, you're out of your mind. But if we're saving all the time, not revisiting decisions and doing all that, we might be able to get more sleep. Um, you know, all joking aside, that when you look at cost-benefit ratios, if we can do the, these things, it will actually save us time, pain, grief, doctor's appointments, et cetera, in the long run. And then more goals that we have and wish lists, things that we have, will be met over the decades. Okay. This is another one. Frame life circumstances differently if you can, or get outside perspective to assist. Um, nobody escapes endings in their lives of various kinds. We know intellectually that they represent also an opportunity in the new beginning. Not easy to remember um, when you're in the middle of it. Uh, help each other remember and help yourself remember what did you do with your non-work time before kids, before elder care, before um, an injury, before a health status change, before whatever it is that is no longer the same. See if there's a possibility of rekindling something that gave you joy in the past. Um, a girlfriend of mine gave me this one, and I hadn't really thought about this before, but she's someone who's been through some pretty traumatic stuff in the last few years. And she said what's working for her 
is, as she looks at her life, is to see sadness during a period and happiness. Instead, she, she used to see it as on one continuum of her life. And now she sees them as two different planes. And so if she's in a period of sadness that she has no control over, you know, stuff happens, she looks at the other plane to see if there are things she can add that can tip the balance a little bit, recalibrate the balance a little bit to balance the sadness plane. And to seek those small pleasures and joys out on, the, on that happiness plane. Um, that was a really different way to look at it for me. I don't know about for you, but it's working for her. I wanted to share it, and I've been trying it out. I like it too, so I wanted to share that. Um, and like Susan, I have my favorite cartoon here. Yeah. Um, and I want to thank David Cypress for this. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this one. This is everything you've ever worried about. That's the uh, high form is that there, whatever is from the mother. And that's everything you've ever worried about that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> from a purely time management standpoint, <laughs> I think we can draw conclusions from that. <laughs> and you can say to yourself, um, I'm going to save my strength for the things that happen. I don't have an unlimited pile of energy and strength. So I'm just going to save it and I will deal with what life throws at me. You know, look and see what I can prevent, look and see what I can do, but I'm going to save my strength for the stuff that happens and not squander it on the things that don't. I've known people with 60, 70 year histories of anxiety and worrying. I come from a long line of them. <laughs> and I've seen people even in that last quarter of life get a light bulb moment and say, you're right, you know, and actually change that thinking pattern. Um, so whatever works for you, but this cartoon has worked for others. Uh, I was looking for people talking about that. I, was, I came across something from uh, a woman with a very interesting background, Council on Farm Relations, Women in Farm Policy Program, and she's also a, a fiction writer. And an interviewer asked her, what's the biggest career mistake you've ever made? And she said, worrying. And I, I thought the way she articulated was interesting, that during her 20s, you know, every decision was magnified. You know, the, the consequences would be dire if she made the wrong decision, there was one way. And then as she, she grew older, she realized that there were so many paths and with perspective, she could see gifts in one path or what looked like a setback opening a door that she would never have gone through otherwise. And it turned out to be a blessing and you can't possibly know that ahead of time. Um, so she was a big fan of not worrying about stuff that doesn't happen, I like that. And you know, along those lines, you know, can we embrace and enjoy not knowing what the future will bring? Would you really want there to be no mystery? Would you really want to have everything planned out and know where things were going? I don't think I would. Um, but the other side of that is, you know, change is dis is unsettling, and um, you know, people do have to reshift and balance themselves. So that's where we can help each other with positive self-talk about the strengths we have and, and our abilities to adapt. And you know, to, to enjoy the uncertain, to enjoy that mystery um, is a good one. And I'm a friend of AA and Al-Anon. I've had the gift and the blessing over my 30 years to work with and know and um, assist people in accessing the 12-step programs. Um, and the serenity prayer, you know, people, people know the long one, um, but uh, Reinhard uh, Niebauer is supposed to have written it, but no one's really sure. But I put a short version of it here. There's, there is a shorter version, but grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. And I think if there's a philosophy of life that, that contributes to mental health and self-care, that's probably the essence of it, in my experience. 
and you know, as caregivers who the survey showed so clearly, and um, both Karen and, and Susan referenced, if we can walk away from um, this evening and others with a decision to be as kind and accepting of ourselves, because I think it really does start with a decision, um, as you are with the people you care for in your work and your personal lives, then um, it's a great start. And uh, Brene Brown, I'll close with a quote from her, which is, daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love ourselves, even when we risk disappointing others. So with that, I will turn it over.